Jürgen, just before we talk about tomorrow's game, uh, can I just get your thoughts on the possibility of the club being punished over fielding an inedible and ineligible. Easy for me to say. <laughs> Swallow my words again. <laughs> An ineligible player in the League Cup. I cannot say too much about it, to be honest. Um, there are other people working on it in a moment. Um, what I can say, if it was all for all alone, then probably we. We need to get punished for it. No, no, didn't happen on purpose or whatever. But um, my, my my only real concern is uh, is the player, to be one of us and honest, because he had already the problem, Pedro, that he couldn't play for half a year last year in Spain. And if you if it would not be allowed to play now from now on until whenever it's sorted, that would be um, for me the biggest problem, to be honest. So how's that? How it is in life? If you make a mistake. Um, it, I'm not sure that we really made a mistake, but if then then it's it's like this. But um, the player should not be punished for that 100%. Is Allison now ready to join in fully with your preparations? Is he going to train fully this week, or do you have to start thinking that he's going to have to wait until after the international break now? There are two opinions, obviously, about that. One is Ali's opinion, and the other is the medical department. So they are still a bit cautious. So we have to we have to wait. Uh, I think then we should. Be. Vinny, can you pass it to Ingrid, and then we'll go. Wait, um, uh, and, and the medical department. Are you nervous? I thought you'd finish. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I thought. Like, always, so, by the way. Yeah, I know. Um, so we have to see. We have to see. He's really, he, the training he's doing looks really well, but it was a serious injury, and we don't want to take any risk. That's how it is. So for tonight, anyway, um, no, no chance, because he didn't train now with, um, so far with the team. Uh, and then we have to see for Leicester, and I think then the United game probably 100%. But that we will see. Finished, yeah. Yes. Super. Ingrid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, tomorrow, one of the boys who might be playing for Salzburg is a 19 year old who scored a hat trick in his debut in the Champions League. What are your thoughts on Erling Breutola? Yeah. Norway has good footballers, yeah. Um, obviously, and yeah, wonderful player to be honest. Very young, very confident, very quick, very looks on the pitch at least clear-minded, um, focused, proper threat. So uh, looks like a decent player and um, is in a perfect place in the moment, I would say. So it's really important for a boy in the age group that you can play as often as possible on the highest possible level and prepare yourself for the next challenge in life, in life. and that's um, what he's doing obviously in the moment. So he's not the only threat unfortunately um, from Salzburg, but um, he's a proper one. Um, and that's it. So congratulations. So the future of Norwegian football is safe. OK, oh, so oh, we oh. have the next three questions. Gentlemen there, gentlemen there, and then a gentleman at the back for the microphones. OK, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jürgen, another Norwegian question, but uh, have you laid the plan for, for stopping a player who scored a hat-trick in the, in the last game? How, how did you approach looking at his, his game and, and how are you going to stop him tomorrow? Yes, and you have to watch the game tomorrow to see it. <laughs> Uh, you had uh, have Sadio Mane and uh, Keita who's been in Salzburg. Can you say some? And uh, you know Leipzig, of course, with the same uh, owners. Do you, can you say something about uh, the way they are developing uh, young players there? They seem to be uh, quite good at that. They are really good at that. So there are different reasons for it. One, the main reason probably is Ralf Rangnick, um, who uh, started this whole project. It was a really smart decision from. Mr. Mateschitz to, to the employer Ralph Rangnick because if you wanted to have somebody who is good in um, delivering that message then they got the best one for it 100%. Um, outstanding manager, um, outstanding sporting director, I don't know exactly which other role he had in the, in the different clubs but um, a lot of a lot of roles and um, it's all based on him obviously and that's, uh, that's great and then the the recruitment stuff is just that the, the, the Austrian rule make, makes make it a little bit easier to make transfers with these kind of players because if for us in England it's just not possible to get that early uh, hand on uh, these kind of players where, which they all got and it looks like I think when they sold 
I'm not sure if they sold him or only gave him to Leipzig. Uh, Nabi Keita, for example, it looked like they have the next one uh, already lined up. Uh, uh, similar players, stuff like this. So they're always they look always prepared for these kind of things. It's really good, but of course the different managers they had over the years um, changed uh, the style of play a little bit. Marco Rose was for sure more influential in, 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 in a way in, in possession. So played a different system. Um, were, um, was just different. And, um, yes, still the philosophy of pressing counter press was obvious, but um, um, with the ball it looked it looked different. Now it's um, kind of, um, going back to the roots, pretty much. It's a it's a proper unit. It's a young, exciting team. It's full of power, um, full of excitement about opportunity to 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 be part of that competition. Because who doesn't know it? But Salzburg had a quite yeah, what is it? It was a rather sad story with the, with the qualifiers for the Champions League. They, they found every year a, a, a way not to get qualified, and it was really hard. This year they are involved, and you see that they they enjoy that fact. And um, yeah, really strong, really good, really good opponent, um, very very well organized, and that's it. Okay. Dom, could you do us a favour? Could you pass the microphone to the uh, guy from Austrian television? There you go. Bit of exercise here. Thank you, Dom. There we go. Maybe we can do two questions and two answers in German. Uh, Herr Klopp, wie groß ist Ihr Respekt vor Salzburg? How much uh, respect do you have for Salzburg uh, after this first match against Genk the Druck of Ihre in the European the Cup? And what, uh, what is the pressure on your team after oh, the defeat uh, in, in, in Naples? Well, my respect is enormous. I mean, but I respect all other teams. Has the 6-2 against Genk meant that the respect has increased? Yes, of course, because we lost 2-0 as well, didn't we? And we heard that the other the uh, score had been 6-2, of course, this is quite some score, isn't it? And then I watched the match and it became a bit more relative because there wasn't such a massive difference. Salzburg scored four goals on breaks, so that's kind of how the match developed. But it's still a good, good game. Um, so also, auch da ist Qualität von, again, they have quality, um, obviously, obviously, but I did respect them before the 6-2 already. Können, if Salzburg can be assured of one thing, then that is the fact that we respect them. We will show it with the attitude we show on the pitch tomorrow. We've always done it like that, and we're going to do exactly that tomorrow as well. The pressure on us, of course, it would be greater if we had nine points, nine points out of two matches, maybe. But of course, that's not something that's possible. We need to win a home much anyway and the pressure therefore isn't much bigger but we don't have a lot of leeway really to be honest yeah up to warten we can't really wait and see and we can't wait with scoring points we need to get points tomorrow but the most important issue is that with all the fantastical stuff Salzburg has done so far that tomorrow night they will have to feel that we are Liverpool and that they are in Liverpool uh, that they're in Anfield uh, this is all additional uh, additional factors that's something we need to use as well and show on the pitch so far I'm only talking we need to have actions tomorrow to prove that what I'm saying is true and that we're not an easy opponent to play yeah. at all. Sorry, excuse me. Hello. You said you had two questions. Was that? That was the. He had, oh, he had two questions. questions. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Can we pass the microphone? Yeah. Sorry, can we pass the microphone to the gentleman in red, and then we'll go to the gentleman in the coat. And if there's any more questions after that, if you could catch my eye. Yes. Uh, good morning, Mr. Klopp. Uh, after the 2 0 defeat in Naples, do you think you can still count on uh, world class defense in particular? Do you think Virgil van Dijk is the best defender in the world? Yeah, I think so. I'm really happy with all my other defenders I have, but um, yeah, probably he's the best in the world. No, he is the best in the moment, that's how it is. Um, that was the question, right? Or did I miss anything? Yeah. A solid, a solid defense, do you think? So? We concede. We conceded in in, in Napoli. Wh which country are you from? Italy. Italy. Sorry. So I thought so. <coughs> I still think it was not a penalty. <laughs> Sorry, we cannot change that anymore, and I'm not even angry about it or whatever, or, or, or disappointed about it. Um, it's still a fact. It was not a penalty. 
So and the second goal result we, we, we conceded because we conceded the first one. So it's not it's Napoli. Problem. Napoli has to come to Liverpool again and stuff like this. So that's a it's not decided yet. We don't feel that, but we lost the game. We, that's that, that's a, that's a fact as well. So and we have to start winning, and we should not waste time. So that's it. We don't say we, we have not even. A, a little bit of a feeling that this game tomorrow is already halfway done. It's not. That's really, really tough, and they will surprise a lot of people tomorrow night and in the in the future as well. Um, the way Salzburg is playing is, is made for surprise bigger teams. But if there's anybody in the world who knows m most about the way they play, how they do, what they do, then it's probably me. Um, I've followed the way for a long, long time. A similar idea when I started as a manager and stuff like this, so I know how where the, where the difficulties are, and um, I have a pretty good side as well. And um, we want to be, and that was always our target. We want to be the most uncomfortable opponent in world football. And if we are that tomorrow night, and it's not easy for Salzburg as well, and we should not forget that. Fantastic. Can we pass the microphone to the gentleman who's still up in the uh, coat there? Ich hätte auch, liebe Grüße aus Wien, Martin Lang, Wolfgang Radio. Ich hätte auch zwei Fragen. I have two questions as well. Wäre, the first one is... Liverpool geht ja als Champions League Titel verteidigen. Liverpool is the holder in the Champions League of the title, of course. So suddenly you have an Austrian team here at Anfield Road that you will have to beat. Does that mean that this myth of Liverpool has changed, not to some degree, for you as a coach? How do you lift this myth as Liverpool coach? You've kind of managed to make Liverpool even more popular. Liverpool has a lot of followers in Austria already. How do you deal with this, this whole thing? I'm not entirely sure whether I understood the question. Did the start with no, of the question have to do anything with the end of the question? No, I have to start about the myth. How do you deal with that myth? Uh, uh, this legend of Liverpool in your daily life, has anything changed for you? Well, I'm from Germany. I'm from southern Germany. Actually, I have respect for Austrian sport. I do a, a bit of skiing and that already. So, uh, uh, as far as I remember, uh, Austria has been great in terms of sports, winter sports. So you don't need to worry that I kind of uh, underestimate Austrian football teams either. The legend, the myth of Liverpool, I'm not even sure. Liverpool is but I think Liverpool is a really great football club, and really great football club. end of. And with our home ground here, we can do a few things that not everybody apparently can do elsewhere on the planet. But then again, that's no guarantee. That means you still have to work very hard. You have to have a very positive approach, which is what we do. But we will never be the favourite in any match. Als Herausforderer, ob es die Situation uh, ist oder ob es We will always be the challenger, be it in terms of situations or opponents uh, or whatever. We will always challenge. And this gives us the opportunity to exceed ourselves even uh, uh, in some situations. Whether necessary or not, the, the team has managed that time and again. And this is exactly what we'll want to do again tomorrow. It's got nothing to do with the good start of the Premier League or the, the defeat against Naples, it's to do with the competition, it's to do with respect uh, for the opponent, it's with the fact that we're playing at home, we just want to experience the same positive experience over and over again, that is what tomorrow is about. Uh, since Barcelona, the home match, we've not had a single European match at home, so it's taken five months to meet again, as it were, and I hope that is something we will feel tomorrow. You're someone who, in the technical area, area can be quite yeah. emotional uh, so tomorrow you can speak German with your with a fellow coach so what will that be like no no I've actually calmed down over the years if you watch the last match I'm actually very relaxed in the technical area I've aged a bit I suppose so that's probably why I don't even talk that much I uh, shout to the players quite a lot but that will not be in German but in English but um, if the Salzburg players speak English like their coach, they will probably understand what I shout 
The problem is that my my own players don't hear me a lot of the time, but that's something else. Final ones, Vinny, we can come back to you, which relates to the, yeah, Vinny O'Connell to finish the press conference. One, you need the microphone, Vinny. No, it's all right. It's just to check it's on. No, you yeah, need the microphone. Right. Yeah. Sorry. There you go. Vinny's really, in a really good shape. Vinny's yeah, really, really good. Really good. <laughs> uh, just to check on Joel Matip and, and Shakiri as well, Jurgen. How are they? Both not available for tomorrow night. With Shagalono 100%. Um, Probably, yeah, we will see. The uh, shark will not be ready for tomorrow, but um, I don't know exactly how um, how it looks in the moment because he, he's still in the hands of the medical department. And with Joel, it was um, it's not a big one, but it's big enough that he's not available for tomorrow night. And um, we don't want to go any risk, and we don't have to take any risk, and um, that's why we, he will not be involved. Okay, Joel, okay for the weekend. Sorry. Okay for the weekend, though, Joel. I don't know. We will see. Thanks guys, thank you very much. Welcome.